delivery of services. Very critically, this strategy looks at coherence of policy frameworks while also assessing what are the infrastructure needs which will power the continent's transformation. The development of continental frameworks, such as the Continental Data Policy Framework, the Interoperability Framework for Digital Identification, and the Continental Strategy for Artificial Intelligence, also all progressed in 2022. However, the digital divide is significant in Africa, between and within regions and countries themselves. Specifically, the gender digital divide remains high. Only 34% of women use the internet compared to 45% of men. Moreover, 15% of rural households had access to the internet in 2021, compared to 50% of urban households. We also note the lack of affordability of digital services, and this remains a bottleneck that exacerbates the use gap, irrespective of internet coverage. Beyond mobile internet coverage, access to fast, reliable, and high bandwidth broadband to sustain businesses and productive processes across the continent remains inconsistent. Special attention needs to be given to some of the following elements, including digital ID, excuse me, cybersecurity, financial technologies, blockchain technology, the development of the cloud, smart cities, the transition to internet protocol version six, geographical blocking, the future of e-commerce, internet governance and net neutrality, and the development of nanotechnology, amongst others. In the field of digital identity, we have been pleased to accompany the efforts of the Federal Republic of Ethiopia in implementing a comprehensive policy framework to ensure that no one is left behind. These efforts will, ye will yield that allow better access to all citizens and in the era of external shocks. We have also worked to establish a center on artificial intelligence in the Republic of Congo, a regional center of excellence. And we are also setting up a similar center of excellence on cybersecurity in Togo. Meanwhile, we have also worked with the, thank you very much, it seemed to be better. Okay, hopefully this is. <laughs> I apologize, my, wife, my voice is also not the best. I, I um, had to do lots of speeches at COP and my voice has not quite uh, recovered. So we have also established, sorry. sorry. Uh, meanwhile, we have worked with the Afrex in the creation of the online, uh, on the online African Trade Exchange or ATEX to facilitate digital trade, payments, and financing under the aegis of the African continental uh, free trade area. So distinguished delegates in France, going forward, third time's the charm. Distinguished delegates, going forward, as noted by the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, two seismic shifts will shape the 21st century. First, the climate crisis and digital transformation. A just energy transition for Africa, as well as the adoption of sustainable value chains, will require a digital policy and infrastructure backbone. From agriculture to transport and energy, the appropriate deployment of digital technologies can allow African countries to improve value addition and multiply employment opportunities. We need to use the digital tools at our disposal to deliver on the promise of our common agenda, which proposes a summit of the future in 2023 with the technology track leading to a global digital compact. Ladies and gentlemen and dear friends, as the world gets ready to prepare for the celebration of 20 years of WISIS and WISIS Beyond 2025, Africa needs to be ready to reflect on its performance and move forward on the basis of evidence-based policies and implementation strategies. The continent, being the least connected, will also be at the heart of the proposed summit for the future. ECA is pleased to organize this crucial and timely 
Africa WISIS 2022 review with its key partners, ITU and the African Union. And we invite you all to actively participate and provide suggestions and recommendations that would enhance the draft report and ensure that Africa attains the meaningful connectivity, which is at the forefront of the 11 WISIS action lines. And most importantly, this connectivity, which is essential to delivering on the SDGs. This will be critical also for the attainment of the African Union Agenda 2063. And we look forward to working in partnership together to achieve this. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Jean-Paul, for this uh, remark. You highlight very well the digital divide uh, into continents. And uh, IGF is a platform to discuss, to see how we can this, come up this, with this, this. Thank you very much. Let me, I would like to acknowledge also the present partners from the You have an important role to play in the regulatory side. As you know, we have uh, faced on several issues on this regulatory environment in the continent, giving this emergence of the, what call it is emerging technology, artificial intelligence, blockchain, internet of things, nanotechnology. Now, let me give the floor to our, one of the, our key partner, African Union Commission, Moses, uh, who represents the Commissioner of uh, Science, Technology, and also Infrastructure. Moses, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jean Paul Adams, Director UNECA, uh, Madam Andre Shaw. welcome you all to this event of the Africa World Summit Information Society Regional Review Meeting 2022. We are pleased to host the Global Internet Governance in Africa and this comes after successfully hosting the World Telecommunication Development Conference uh, this year as well which shows the commitment and readiness of Africa to embrace our digital future and contribute to debates and development, especially that we have seen during COVID-19 pandemic, digitalization demonstrated its key role to support national resilience in our countries. Ladies and gentlemen, the WISIS brought the global community together and adopted a common set of principles and a vision of modern information society. As we take stock of the implementation of WISIS, let us note the progress and reaffirm our commitment to building on that progress to ensure that digital transformation is accelerated in Africa. Our leaders have recognized the digital transformation as a driver for social economic development and critical to the attainment of Agenda 2063 aspirations and the UN Sustainable Development Goals by adopting the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa in 2020 as the master plan that will guide our digital agenda up to 2030. As part of the implementation of the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, the AU Commission, in collaboration with regional economic communities and regional institutions, partners, have taken a number of initiatives, including but not limited to the following. The Continental Data Policy Framework has been developed and uh, adopted uh, during the AU Summit in February 2022 and its implementation 
uh, we are now embarking on its implementation. The AU interoperability framework for digital ID has also been adopted by the same summit in uh, February 2022. We have also developed the AU digital education strategy and work is ongoing to finalize development of sectorial digital strategies for agriculture and health. A draft child online safety and empowerment policy has been developed as well and the process is underway to develop a continental cyber security strategy as well as reviewing the AU Convention on Cyber Security and Personal Data Protection with a view to update some of the outmoded articles. Implementation of digital infrastructure project is also ongoing through the program for infrastructure development in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let me commend the outstanding work of all stakeholders in Africa that are working to the attainment of the WISIS outcomes and wish you a successful meeting and reiterate that the AU Commission will continue to harness WISIS commitments towards the implementation of the Digital Transformation Strategy for Africa, AU Agenda 2063, and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I thank you. Thank you, Moses, for highlight all this uh, digital framework adopted during this year and also the work done in collaboration with a a ECA and as a partner. Now, let me give the floor to the USG Tech Envoy, on, uh, Tech Envoy of the Sector General. You have the floor and thank you for your coming. Merci beaucoup, Makta. Uh, merci pour l'accueil chaleur. Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, very impressive to listen to the progress on the VISIS action lines made by the African continent. This gives us hope and it's very timely, this reflection that you're having ahead of the VISIS forum uh, in 2023. From the perspective of the UN Secretary General, as was mentioned earlier, the digital transition and the green transition go hand in hand. And the fate of Agenda 2030, the state of being on the 17 Sustainable Development Goals would be determined largely by what happens uh, in the continent of hope in Africa. What we've heard today from the uh, Regional Commission and from the African Union's perspective uh, shows that there are good trends on connectivity, but at the same time, huge rural urban gaps, gender gaps, uh, and the global gap that Africa still continues uh, to, to experience, not only with regard to physical connectivity, but also with regard to excess and affordability data rates in some parts of Africa are still very, very high compared with the per capita incomes. But we also see gaps in the area of data and digital public infrastructure. So there are three things that I could underline today as a focus for policymakers, also in view of the distinguished presence of parliamentarians in our midst. Uh, these are the following. First, more aggressive action on bridging the connectivity gap, particularly the rural and the gender connectivity gaps. This would require innovative partnerships. This would require an innovative combination of technologies, uh, proper fiber, satellite, radio, and it would also require innovative public private finance. public goods and digital public infrastructure. We need the common rails such as digital identity, universal payment mechanisms to facilitate the access of citizens at large into the digital economy. 
innovation will not accelerate. We have exciting news of the startups, but we need to do much more. So that will only happen when we have the digital public infrastructure that affords the entry barriers for innovators coming to the digital economy. The third thing that I'd like to emphasize is getting Africa ready for the data economy. The initiatives that the African Union Commission has taken uh, with regard to data protection, uh, with regard to interoperability, those are commendable. And member states would have to follow up by creating their own data ecosystems, which would mean investments in the human resource, data scientists, machine learning specialists, which would mean opening up public sector data sets, combining them smartly with the private sector data sets, making them available to innovators and researchers, improvise privacy protected ways so that data driven and innovation can accelerate. It would also mean coming to the cutting edge where data and AI meet other sciences, whether it's genomics, whether it's new materials, whether it's the development of climate change resilient agriculture. So all these issues would have to be tackled at the same time. And there is no easy way into uh, the digital economy. Those who have made it uh, in Asia, in Europe, in North America have invested years of effort. And the same would need to be done again. Let me close just by underlining the opportunity with Global Digital Compact in 2024 to bring more political attention uh, to these issues, to bring more resources into play, and essentially to bring the world together on how to approach the digital transformation in a human-centric way. The Global Digital Compact would be the first step of such leaders-level commitment on the digital transformation. Uh, it would cover not only protection side, addressing the misuse, the risk to human rights and fundamental rights, uh, that's the agenda, but also leveraging the opportunity to accelerate progress on the SDGs. So my office invites uh, all of you to contribute to the Global Digital Compact, provide your inputs, the process is open till the end of March, and these meetings themselves here at the ITF are an opportunity for us to think together, to bring insights from Africa into that important discussion uh, in India. So let me close by thanking Maktar and his colleagues for the excellent work you are doing in um, following up on the business agenda and also in helping us take forward the consultations on the global
How are we? Are they supporting us to get into the digital space? And the final is a partnership, which again is key. We have now from the presentation this morning, we know collaboration is key. We all have to work together if we have to get where we want to be. And again, this again aligns the SDGs with the YCs. And uh, when you see uh, action line three, it cuts across all the SDGs. Some SDGs affect uh, a few action lines. But there are those which are very, very key. And again, we see the la, uh, action uh, 10 again, which has something to do with the information society. Again, it cuts across most of the SDGs. So what we are saying is that the YC's action lines, they are aligned to SDGs. And as a continent, we need to move all of them together. Again, I tried just to align. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, just to show now specifically which are the uh, YC's action lines and what SDGs they are interacting with. So, in the interest of time, 
we start with the action line one which is the role of governments and all stakeholders in the promotion of ICTs for development and we, as we have heard from uh, uh, Moses from the African Union Commission a lot is happening in this sector we have the continental data Pro uh, policy framework we have the interoperability framework for digital ID we have continental approach for artificial intelligence the, the question is as member states how are we doing to ensure that we domesticate we start nationalizing what is happening at the continental level and uh, the country status a number of countries actually have started coming up with the digital transformation strategies uh, the case of Kenya that uh, launched its digital transformation strategy 2022-2032 in uh, April this year and it aligns to the African Union digital transformation strategies again it aligns to SDGs other countries I know they are doing the same let's continue technology seems to be letting us down because I really need to be moving with my slides and that is not happening uh, but basically I highlighted some countries I know many countries are doing a lot when it comes to this uh, digital transformation strategy we have the case of Senegal that are doing quite interesting things we have the case of South Africa again we have the case of Rwanda a lot is happening when it comes to digital transformation strategy and they are aligning to the continental Again, when we, st uh, we are still uh, under action one, we have seen quite a lot of progress when it comes to operationalization of the African continent of the area, which again cuts across the continent. And uh, currently there are 54 African member states that have signed. And uh, as at October 2022, 44 of them have had, uh, already deposited their instruments. And I have highlighted the countries. So again, you can see we are doing well with regard to that in recognition of the importance of the cross trade uh, across the continent. We go to the second action line, which is information and communication infrastructure. And this is where we are talking about meaningful connectivity. We are saying we are connected. And there's a lot of connectivity going on, uh, going on across the continent. But is it meaningful? And by that, we mean, are you able to do basic things in the internet? Because it's not just enough to have 2G or 3G. Most of the work that we are doing, we probably need 4G. And the next thing is gender. We have discussed that. I'm not going to go back to it. And then uh, we have discussed about the, the gap between urban and rural, which again, we need to address. And we have projects. And uh, as mentioned, we have the, uh, the Peter project uh, that is cutting across the continent and 11 of the projects that, are, that, that were adopted in 2021, they relate to ICT. And again, a lot is happening in terms of internet exchange point, in terms of uh, data centers. And I know at the national level, there is a lot that is happening that we need to take stock of. And uh, just to get some statistics from uh, ITU, and again, we see where we are positioned that in terms of uh, fixed uh, broadband, I know we say we have moved to mobile uh, connectivity, so that, that we may not to put too much emphasis on. But when we come even to percentage of those who are using the internet, the last column, you see as in 2022, only 33% of us uh, across the continent are in the internet space. And the global average is 59. So you can see how much we are pushing the global average. And in addition to that, what uh, this connectivity is in the urban areas. And we know majority of our continent, we are in the rural areas. And we are saying the COVID, we all went online, e-health, e-education, e-agriculture, which means a majority of our population was left. So that is another area we really need to address. And uh, again, I'm not going to emphasize this. I think we have discussed that it's not just about connectivity. Let's now go to affordability why are people not using uh, they have access why are, not, are they not using is it also because of content and i know it is a uh, one of the other action lines is it because of our priority what exactly are the issues and i need really, i think we need to sit down do research do baseline um, uh, research to understand country by country what exactly is happening if we have connected up to the rural, why is usage not there all are we really trying to contextualize if we go to a particular rural areas look at what are the social economic activities and then ensure that you are pushing those kind of activities because if you don't do that then we'll have broadband up to the village but you're not it. 
and when we use it, it will not be for our benefit. We have again to link it to our socio-economic activity. And uh, there's quite a lot of innovation, and I, I give the case of Ghana, who, uh, uh, Rwanda, which again has done a lot in terms of connectivity. And we need to emulate that as a continent and link up startups, let's promote our startups who are doing something in the internet space. Then we move to the third action line, uh, you went too fast, which is uh, access to information and knowledge. And again, we note during COVID, this was critical to access the right information. Was that happening? And when it was happening, was that information accurate? Was it timely and the like? And I, I think this action line really improved in the last two years. Uh, but we need to have, again, legal frameworks that will protect um, access and uh, people's rights. Because, again, you don't want a lot of surveillance and the like, so that's another area that you need to focus on. And then in terms of uh, access to this information, have we empowered our national uh, education, our national research and education centers? Because those are um, institutions that most countries have them as a PPP, private-public partnership. And with that, there are institutions that are more neutral that we can use to disseminate information to the, our local people. The libraries uh, that are up to the rural parts of our country, again, those are some of the avenues we need to focus on. The, the UN Government Survey 2022 demonstrates that 54 countries are below the Global E-Government Development Index, which again is key, because uh, without uh, being connected, without the, the government being at the forefront, then that means the critical information that the general citizens need is not availed to them. And this uh, just shows uh, it, oh, it goes now to capacity building, sorry. <laughs> and in terms of capacity building, a lot, a lot is, has happened in the, last, uh, in the last one year. But have we integrated ICT, emerging technologies, in our curriculums? May they be primary, secondary, and tertiary institution. Again, that is not, well, it is happening, we need to hasten, we need to work more. We need to incorporate our higher education of our higher institutions of learning to be able to, to train and to, to produce uh, students or workforce that, uh, that is aligned to what is available in the market. So again, we are not doing so well when you compare to the other countries. And this is in relation to basic, standard, and advanced, where basic is about just uh, opening files, copying and editing, standard, you are able to work in uh, a PowerPoint, you are able to do Excel and the like. And advanced is when we are moving data science, people are able to do programming and the like. We need again to, to look into that. Again, targeted capacity building, we need to identify the gaps that are there. And I know again this is happening, that um, we need to ensure that the capacity development and the protection of critical infrastructure. And we have the SAT, the critical information infrastructure, sorry, the, the SAT and, uh, I might confuse myself, that we need to ensure that we have uh, expert teams that are dealing with the uh, incident responses at the national level. And then we need also to leverage on what is happening at the continental level. And we know UNECA is doing quite a lot when it comes to African Girls Hybrid Coding Camp. We also know PRIDA, the project that I'm working on, is doing a lot of capacity building uh, with regards to internet governance. And uh, so far we have trained 1,500 young people uh, from across the uh, stakeholder groups to be able to understand what is happening in the internet governance space and to be able to train their neighbors, their relatives and the like. Again, ISOC is doing a lot of uh, training that, uh, that, is, uh, that is useful for the continent. So building confidence and security in the use of ICT. And again, we are saying if we are not confident in the internet governor or in the digital space, then we are not going to use these technologies. And uh, with the advanced use, with many people getting into the digital space, then we are having cyber instances that needs to be addressed. And uh, we also note that even when we have the Malabo Convention, we know we don't have the, the right numbers of signatories. But countries have been aligning their national strategies to fit into what is in the Malabo Convention. So again, that is one good step that has been going on. I know the case of Kenya, we launched our cybersecurity strategy this year, but you can see it has borrowed a lot from what uh, the Malabo Convention has, and it, it recognizes its existence. 
So again, that is a good step we have made. And uh, again, uh, this is a point I was good, uh, going to make, that many countries have already set up the computer emergency response teams that are working with the, with the government, with the private sector, with the civil society to ensure that first of all they are able to monitor what is happening at the national level and report. Then again, a uh, vulnerable group that we must protect are the young people. And uh, quoting by a report, the Web Protect Global Alliance Global Threat Assessment 2021 reported that 44% of young people in the Middle East and North Africa, that just a case, uh, had uh, that 1% in Central Africa and 57% South African experienced at least one online sexual harm during their childhood. So, this is a report in the past. What is happening now? During COVID, we locked our children in our houses and we were busy doing other things. What happened when we gave them those mobile devices as uh, toys to play around with? So again, that's an area we really need to focus on and see what needs to be done. And consequently, cyber hygiene and empowering of children to keep them safe online is becoming important for the continent. And we need to work again together as a continent to ensure we have the right policy. Some countries have documented safety initiatives such as status on child African safety initiative in Kenya. We have the Be, Smart, uh, Be Cyber Smart tips to keep children safe online that is coming from Ghana. We have a campaign to boost internet safety that started in 2021 in Uganda and Zambia. And those are just some of the key things that are happening across the continent. So there are also registration within Africa to guide policy making. And uh, as uh, Moses said, African uh, Union is coming up with a child online policy, a continental guide that now as uh, other countries can start domesticating and seeing what they can share, what they can adapt. And we know we have to contextualize these things. We are 25, 54 countries with different culture, different aspirations and the like. But these global issues that, is, uh, that, that are facing us, we must come up with a common strategy that we can deal with together. Then we go to enabling environment, that is uh, action line six. And in that, again, the African Trade Exchange Platform was launched in May 2022 which is a good way of creating an enabling environment from the continental level. At the national level, entrepreneurship has been promoted. Most countries are doing quite a lot to promote that aspect of it. And uh, the government, again, and I, I give the case of 61% uh, uh, of countries uh, are offering average 12 online services. Some are doing up to 22. Actually, from the latest report, the e-government report, uh, Rwanda had 92 online services, which is quite very good. And that, what, what does that mean? That when it comes to dealing with citizens, sharing information with the government to government, citizen to citizen, uh, government to, to private sector and the like, then it is easy. You don't have, I, I can't remember the last time I went to, to a government office because I can get all that information online. And that's the kind of uh, enabling environment we are talking about. We go to the next slide. Uh, number seven, which is uh, ICT applications. And I don't even think I'll go into the details into this because there are quite a number of ICT applications that are addressing e-government, e-business, e-learning, e-health, e-employment, e-environment, agriculture, and science. And most of them actually really became prominent during the COVID-19. Uh, but again, uh, emphasizing on uh, what the EGOR has been stated is that we need laws and regulations to be able, first of all, to provide this information, but then also to protect our people, to ensure that we are comfortable in that digital space. And uh, we need to up our performance at, uh, at the e-government digital index. Uh, and again, I we emphasize only four countries were able to get a higher rate of more than 0 0.6. So that's an area, again, we need to focus on. Uh, let's continue. And uh, that just gives a highlight of the 10 countries that did best. But again, even as we are doing best, you see we start appearing from number 65. So clearly there are 65 countries that were uh, ahead of any African countries in this... Uh
part comes in that the moment you all move digital, then we are creating more exclusion. Environment, again, which cuts across quite a, a, a number of SDGs. Uh, there's a lot that happened. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm moving fast in the interest of time, because also I want to give you people time to ask questions. E agriculture, again, a lot happened. We, uh, we have UNECA that is supporting a project in Botswana, and there are quite a number of projects that are going on across the continent. Then we go to e-science. And uh, e-science, that's where we need to set innovation hubs. In, in March 2022, the Africa Research Center on Artificial Intelligence was launched in uh, Congo Brazzaville. I think during the opening session, we were told there's another one that is being set in Togo. So in terms of innovation hubs, in terms of research, in terms of making sure that we are doing our own research, to ensure climate change, we are addressing it in the best way possible. E-waste, with all these technologies that are uh, being dumped in our continent, what are we doing about that? So we need a lot to do a lot of research to ensure that all that is taken into account. Then when it comes to action number six, cultural diversity, identity, linguistic diversity, and local content, we are a continent of diverse culture, uh, diverse uh, language, and the like. And I think we need to take all this into account to ensure that we are people are not just left behind because the appropriate content is not there. They are not able to use that. Because for sure we have young people who are able to do all the interpretations and to ensure that we have the right content uh, in the internet. But are we doing that? Um, and then just to highlight that in the second review of Agenda 2063 goals, there was moderate progress of 45% with regard to Aspiration 5, which is about Africa with a strong cultural identity, common heritage and shared values and ethics. I think that that's an area we really need to emphasize. As much as we are getting westernized, we should not forget about our culture. We should not forget to document what we have for the sake of our future generations. So that is an area that we really need to focus on. And again, we noted that uh, UNESCO adopted a declaration on indigenous language, including with regard to digital empowerment, language technology, and indigenous media. As our as member states, are we aligning to that? What are we doing at the national level to ensure that we align to that? When it comes to media, which is uh, action line 10, a lot happened in terms of liberalization, that any one of us can uh, be a media personality, and with that comes the issue of regulations, comes the issue of ensuring that, <laughs> ensuring that we are doing responsible journalism. How do we do that in terms of how do we impose ethics, guidelines, and the like? And again, that's an area that has moved forward, but we need to be sure that we are doing the right thing. And the number 10, which is ethical dimension of the information society. And if you note this affect all the SDGs, that again, we need to ensure that we are promoting ethics in the digital space. Artificial intelligence is one of the areas that we need all to be there to ensure that it's not an avenue of exclusion. It's not an avenue where what we aspire as a continent is not being uh, progressed. And I go to the last, action line with international and regional cooperation and again what are we doing in terms of this and i'll narrow down in terms of what we are doing at the globe at the igf which is one of the areas where we have regional cooperation and uh, as you all know uh, we, we always have national igf regional igf continental igf and continental igf is where we bring all the regional economic communities the private sector the civil society the media and the like and just going by what we had this year, we had, uh, it was held in Malawi in July with 934 people who are there in person. We had 1,303 people who registered online and uh, who are participating online. So in total, in total we had 1,835 participants. Again, those are diverse group of people, the young, the old, people with different abilities, which I think was good. Again, probably good to mention that uh, during the, uh, the, Africa, the Africa School of Internet Governance, the focus was the UN open-ended working group. That we need again to be able to discuss issues of norms, CPMs at the global space, because we are all there and we need to be safe. And quite a number of things were launched, including the Network of Africa, African Parliamentarian and also the Network of African Women in Cybersecurity. And, uh, what is the link between YCs and uh, Global Digital Compact? I, again, this was discussed in, this, um, in the opening session. 
that at the, uh, at, the, uh, at the international level, Africa is aligning to the global digital compact aspiration. That GDP uh, aims uh, at facilitating the use of digital technologies for the realization of 2030 agenda for sustainable development and enhancing inclusive digital access on certain across the globe. And therefore, the global digital compact is expected to outline shared principles for an open, free, and open digital future for all. Clearly, as a continent, we need to be there from the world go. We need to put forward our aspirations and what we need. So, what are some of the recommendations that we, we are giving? That we need to hasten the achievement of universal and meaningful connectivity by 2030. We need to ensure that the legal aspects are taken care of, that we are not just moving in the implementation without the legal and policy area. Attention to be given to digital literacy, given to low levels of the continent's performance, skills that that is targeted capacity building let us contextualize the, uh, the capacity we are giving again collaboration by partners working on YC's aspiration and SDGs needs to be optimal and complementary and uh, sorry I'm rushing again regional cooperation we need to perceive the uh, uh, participate on discussion to do with norms and CPMs we need to prioritize our activities as a continent. And there's a lot that has been done by the World Bank. It has worked on 17 countries, very elaborate projects that we all need to borrow from. In conclusion, uh, Africa made great strides in implementing the wisest action lines. We need to deal with inclusion, rural, urban, women, young people in the best way possible. We need to start now investigating the continental frameworks that have been created. And again, we have to leverage on the digital financial inclusion for those countries that have already made sense in that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jambora, for this comprehensive presentation. The report will be shared with uh, uh, next in January uh, because we are going to finalize uh, this draft. We are going to finalize the report by end of December and we'll share with you. But we we'll put the report online if you have any comment or any input, uh, we'll give you the link. As you say, as you say from this, uh, we have seen from this presentation, a lot of progress uh, have been made by African countries during uh, this year in the implementation of the Mrs. Action Line. But we can just highlight a few. Yeah. On C1, uh, in the policy side, to a lot of things has been, uh, has been done by the member state, but we need uh, to focus more on the regulatory side for the emerging technology and to integrate the e-commerce and uh, the digital payment into our regulatory side. It is uh, now something happening in several countries. And, and when you look at the African country, only Kenya and South Africa are some provision on the e-commerce side for the, st for the development of the fintech. On the infrastructure side, still remaining this gap because we are only 33% access to internet and there is a gap, a digital gender gap in the, in the con continent. We have to put more emphasis in the development of the infrastructure by involving the national private sector to the development of uh, the telco infrastructure. Capacity building, there are a lot and also e-application Due to the COVID, we have 5,000 e-applications in the continent during last year. Due to COVID. We did uh, very good progress on that. Access to information needs also improvement. Also, media, you have a big role to play the parliamentary on media. We have several problems with the media on the digital side. And in the collaboration, international collaboration is going well. We can say... By the end of the wishes 2025, we have a lot of progress made, but we have also a long way for 2013. Thank you very much. Let me rush to give the floor to Gitangali to present the Open Forum for 2023, because this report will be present to the wishes 2023 before we open the question. Gitangali from ITU.
who had participated uh, physically in the WISIS Forum uh, in Geneva. Next slide, please. So there are several prize winners. Uh, I would like to please uh, remind you that we have a coveted, I can see many of you have already won the prize who are sitting in the room. Uh, and many come from Africa, South Africa, Uganda, Ghana, Rwanda, uh, Ethiopia has also won. And you know, so they are prize winners and champions. These are very coveted uh, contests. The nominations are open now. So please do submit your nomination so that we can see some uh, prize winners coming from the region. Next slide, please. So of course, in collaboration with the UN Tech Bank, uh, we have also started some special tracks and initiatives focusing on uh, least developing countries. Um, and uh, we really hope that we can uh, have some uh, more collaboration on these tracks. Uh, we did some e-resilience and digital transformation uh, workshops for developing economies, role of ICTs in finance and digital inclusion. So we are hoping that not only we can cover, create awareness through these different workshops, but also strong partnerships, uh, which you can take forward. Next slide, please. So now moving to the business process timeline, uh, many of you are familiar with this that we uh, started in 1998 uh, during the ITU plenipotentiary in uh, Minneapolis when Tunisia said that, that there should be something like a WISIS, which provides a framework to information society. And then we had the two summits in accordance to the General Assembly resolution in 2001, 2003 and 2005. Since then, we've been um, having various platforms to collaborate to implement the WISIS action line framework. Uh, we have 11 WISIS action lines like the Sustainable Development Goals. And our mandate was renewed by, uh, in 2015. And now our mandate is still 2025. And we await you know, discussions at the regional level, at the national level, at the international level, and at the level of UNGA to uh, explore the future of the WISIS uh, process. Next slide, please. So like I said, since 2015, we've been aligning the WSIS action lines with the sustainable development goals to show that each and every action line has an impact on the uh, SDGs with the UN action line facilitators, FAO, U UNESCO, UNCTAD, uh, WHO. We mapped all of this and there is a matrix which is available online since 2015, which shows a di direct link between the action lines and the SDGs. Next slide, please. Of course, we are also aligning now with the global processes coming up in New York, the uh, UNSG's common agenda, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. Uh, now at the ITU plenipotentiary, uh, we recently had a plenipotentiary where our new Secretary General was, uh, was elected, Ms. Doreen Bogdan-Martin. She will be here uh, from tomorrow onwards to show strong commitment of ITU towards uh, the region and the processes. So Mr. Uh, the Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, he reiterated the importance of uh, WISIS. We renewed our resolution 140 on WISIS. Uh, and of course, our uh, chairman, um, um, Professor uh, Isa Ali, uh, Ali Ibrahim, uh, the minister uh, of Nigeria, was present uh, for a side event. Next slide, please. So one very important thing that the WISIS does is uh, with 32 UN agencies, we have a, a group called the UNGIS, United Nations Group on the Information Society. And we work at the uh, senior level uh, and top management level, and of course at the working level. Um, and I'm sure Makta, you're somewhere there in the photos and Jean-Paul as well, uh, to ensure that there is good collaboration within the uh, UN frameworks to implement the WISIS process. Next slide, please. We do various kinds of uh, joint contributions, joint statements. Uh, we do side events together. Um, and for example, the most recent one was to the Commission on the Status of Women, where we've given a joint contribution to showcase how technologies are very important and digital uh, gender inclusion, like Makta just said just now, is so important. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is extra budgetary, we always need money. Uh, so these are our partners. Next slide, please. Yeah, so this is Forum 2023. Please mark these dates on your calendar, 13th to 17th of March in Geneva in a hybrid mode. And we continue the virtual workshops in April and May. Next slide, please. So we build our agenda through an open consultative process. 
uh, phase one is done, phase two is uh, going to happen here on the 30th of November uh, in, in the IGF. Please join us there from, from 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock, sorry. And uh, we hope to collect ideas from all of you to input into the agenda and program of the WISIS Forum. Next slide, please. It's a very simple way to input your ideas. Just log on to the online form, create a profile and submit your ideas that this is important, this topic is important, this format should be used. So we really look forward to your ideas to be able to uh, build the agenda and the program. Next slide, please. Of course, we'll have a high level track, which is open and uh, inclusive. So it's open to civil society, private sector, technical community, governments. So technically, we get ministers, head of regulatory bodies, uh, civil society heads, academia heads, and so on and so forth. One new component we've started, started is the mayor's round table. And of course, with uh, Excellency Nima and others, we are looking at the parliamentary component of the VISIS uh, forum as well. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. So, this is Pride. Of course, all of you like this a lot. Uh, but please do remember the deadline. It's 7th of December. Um, and uh, it's a it's an online voting exercise. So, it's like a popularity contest. So, please submit your project. Uh, have this online popularity contest. And we hope that the best project wins. Next slide, please. Again, we have a stock picking database. Uh, so if you're looking for projects, it's uh, sorted out by action lines and SDGs. There are 15,000 projects right now. So please do have a look at them. Or if you want to popularize your projects, please submit them online and they will appear in our repository. Next slide, please. We have a photo contest. So these photos are free to be used. So please uh, go to our website and use these photos. We get uh, beautiful photos from all over the world every year. Uh, and they are also sorted by action lines and SDGs. Next slide, please. So the special tracks. These are some of the tracks that all stakeholders have identified. For the African region, some of these may be more important for, uh, than for other regions like ICTs and youth, gender mainstreaming, uh, emerging technologies for sustainable development, well-being and happiness. We initiated this with Bhutan uh, uh, during COVID accessibility is older persons. This is something that, which is getting really important uh, for countries. Uh, cyber security. With UNESCO, we are doing indigenous peoples and cultures. Um, of course, with the UN Tech Bank, developing countries and LDCs. Uh, then ICTs for clean technologies and climate change. There is a huge uh, uh, momentum for clean technologies, especially after POP. So we do hope that more ideas come through this. And digital citizenship and public services. It's a new track that we have added uh, this year. Next slide, please. And many, many more things that we'll be working on, especially important things like digital marketing of harmful products to children. We'll be creating awareness of this with WHO, uh, UNESCO, and ITU. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, those of you who are not aware of this, our hackathon is ongoing right now. Uh, we are doing it this year with Saudi Arabia. So please apply. There's no age limit. So those of you who are interested uh, in policy, in coding, in leadership, please apply for the hackathon. There's a very good price of $5,000. Uh, so we are partnering with Saudi, and they've been very kind. Uh, and uh, we do hope that we get some excellent uh, uh, projects out of this and excellent uh, prototypes which we can uh, use. Next slide, please. Uh, WISIS and SDG talks, many of you have been attending these. We are aligning them with the uh, UN uh, days. And these are all virtual, so uh, please feel free, free to join them whenever possible. So next slide, please. Next slide. So I'll quick, uh, quick enough because uh, Maktar is giving me the hint. So we have a Women in Technology repository. So I see many women out here. If you are not part of this, please join the repository because we do many trainings out here, uh, many speaking opportunities, many capacity building workshops. So please do sign up. Next slide, please. Uh, we have gender trendsetters. Next slide, please. Uh, initiatives on ICTs and older persons. Next slide. Uh, next slide. 
youth campaigners next slide next slide next slide okay so i think uh, um, uh, you will talk about the review later also uh, uh, makka so i'll leave this um, and uh, i'd like to thank uh, all of you for your attention and hopefully we can work together for the next edition of the visis uh, forum thank you very much thank you. thank you very much for this uh, presentation I think this is 23 is very important now for all of Africa, for the world, because we are preparing the this is uh, plus 20. In Africa, we need more involvement of the African country. Why we are we decide to expand now the task force for IGF uh, uh, to activity on this is forum and also to the preparation of the glo digital global compact. Now the chair of the task force is there, Mr. Ponsale. And uh, I, you, you, you can meet with him to see how we can evolve all African country in the next process of the WISIS. Now uh, we, we are running out of the time. I want to open the floor for 10 minutes to get questions from uh, you on uh, WISIS, also on the Open Consultation Forum. If you have any question or any clarification about this uh, WISIS implementation presented by Nyambura, and as well as uh, the WISIS Open Forum presented by uh, Gitangali. Yes. Thank you, Mokta. Thank you, Nyambura and uh, Kori Gitangali. My first one is, how do we access those presentations? How you access to? those presentations? No. All presentations will be shared. Where is uh, uh, Abi? Is there Abi? <laughs> can share all the presentation eh? okay. yeah then the second the last one is i think uh there's a lot of uh, i think uh, need to connect everyone and the connect uh, connectivity and access are very important and i think we need to look at all the stakeholders because if you look at the current status is that we are leaving connectivity to the service providers the operators i think we do have uh, many stakeholders within our countries the municipalities, the rural development agencies, I think they must be brought on board to connect everyone, wherever in the village, wherever you talk about, you know, wherever people live. So I think we need to relook at how can we achieve that goal, connecting everyone. Because we cannot leave that agenda only to the service providers. Because sometimes the funding also plays a part because they borrow money, whatever, from various institutions, from the banks, and they, they want, mostly when they borrow money, they want to go where there are big, quick returns. So we also need to look at how is funding you know, being channeled to connectivity and access. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Okay. Bonsoir à tout le monde. Moi, c'est M. Abdelil Bacharbon. Je viens du chat. Et je vous remercie pour cette session qui est vraiment capitale pour nous. Donc, ma question est simple. Comment uh, faire un lien avec nos textes, parce que je sais que nos parlementaires, nos honorables sont ici là, pour euh, la révision de nos textes dans nos pays, comment incorporer les outputs des WISIS, parce qu'on sait qu'il y a les agendas, les ODD, l'agenda 2063, et dans nos propres pays, nous avons nos propres agendas de développement. Donc, tous ces liens, comment faire ces liens Donc, pour que nous aurons euh, un développement numérique euh, participatif et, et axé vers la population Je vous remercie. Euh, merci. Mike. Yeah. Um, sorry, I hope I'm not too close. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Catherine Adair, um, the Director of Research at the Web Foundation, although leaving my job in two days. But um, um, I was very impressed right from the panel session to Nyambura to all this. And there's so much that I unpacked and I was saying I, I wish we had more opportunity to even unpack it like almost in a workshop kind of model to look at the various areas even that Nyambura discussed. But maybe I'll just pick one. Um, looking at the fact that I was even involved in the crisis right from the beginning and then disappeared somehow. And it's now 20 years later. But even in talking about the various progress that has been made by the African nations, like the impl implementation of Agenda 2063 flagship projects, I feel when they're talking about digital economy, digital transformation, 
there's so much in terms of signed documents. And as a director of research globally, I see this. But there's very little, and Yambura challenges on that, that maybe we should have some more research at country level. There's very little in actually looking at what happens in terms of ratification and implementation of these documents. Because there's enough evidence to show that um, we could actually accelerate affordable internet, affordable gadgets, meaningful connectivity, all these terms we are talking about, but the people are at different levels. So even when you look at something like the Africa, I call it what, AFTA, uh, there's 40, 54 countries signed. But I think the real opportunity lies in once these instruments of ratification are deposited in the countries, they should really begin um, removing the tariff and non-tariff barriers to facilitate trade. And this is where I'm also seeing the interlinkage with the digital transformation, because there's a lot that needs amendment in the country level and harmonization. So I, I want to give others time, but you can see my book was almost half filled and thinking of, I wish I was a discussant, I was itching to be on those papers and to be able to unpack this, the opportunities are there, but there needs to be harmonization and speaking with one voice. Otherwise we'll just keep looking at this again and saying, what progress, beyond progress, what is the implementation? Thank you. Thank you, another one before, another Okay, um, hi. Hi, my name is Kweku from Ghana. No, but um, please, please, on this side. Okay, good morning. My name is Naza uh, Nicholas Kirama, and I'm currently uh, the project, project manager for Tanzania Digital Inclusion Program. Um, what we have done on the ground is uh, actually providing meaningful connectivity to five schools, uh, uh, the smallest uh, units of government that have never been connected. And we have been able to connect uh, around uh, 120 uh, community members to the uh, broadband internet. And we aim to create about uh, 200 uh, community network innovation hubs. So my question is, um, for people who are doing it, uh, uh, implementing the action lines and, and uh, the digital cooperation, like us, how can uh, WIZIS and ITU help people like us? Because we have the potential to connect people to broadband internet using what, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what, what is available, the technology that is available, the fiber connection. So uh, my question will, uh, will go to, to the WIZIS and, and ITU. How do you uh, actually actualize us who are doing uh, the work on the ground? Thank you. Thank you. We are going to stop there because we have another panel. Now let me, Kitangeli, you want to answer. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, so there are various ways to uh, contribute. Uh, so. Uh, so one is through processes like WISIS, uh, which are multi-stakeholder. We have several events, several uh, possibilities to uh, work together in consultative processes. Second is through the ITU processes, like we have study groups uh, at the ITU. Uh, we have our own uh, regional office here in Africa. Uh, I think uh, Andrew Shell, the regional director, was here in the morning as well. Uh, and we can sit together, sir, and uh, discuss this further as well. So I'm going to be here. I'll just speak to you uh, on a bilateral basis as well. Th thank you. At the, let, let me start by the... There is one question related to the parliamentary, to the regulation. Uh, from Chad. Bon. Ce qui est important, c'est qu'il faudra qu'on a la chance d'avoir les parlementaires ici, hein, qui sont maintenant au fait des enjeux et des opportunités de cette société de l'information. Et ça leur permet d'avoir une meilleure compréhension de ce qu'ils doivent adopter et comment accompagner les États pour que l'économie numérique puisse être bénéfice à toute la population. Of course, on a aussi... Euh, Ils sont au devant de, la, de, de ça parce qu'il y a le forum des parlementaires de l'Ouest africain qui va se réunir l'année prochaine. C'est le deuxième forum. 
dont les présidents sont là. Donc, ils vont discuter de ces problèmes-là. Hein? Comment les parlementaires peuvent aider les pays africains à bénéficier des, des technologies Parce qu'on sait que dans les années 2030, 90% des nouveaux emplois dans le monde seront numériques ou auront une connotation numérique. Et 70% de la population africaine euh, sera, aura moins de 35 ans en, en 2050. Donc, c'est des choses... Je pense que les parlementaires sont vraiment au fait. Et we have also APNIC. APNIC, uh, in their uh, program uh, plan, have this regulatory issue to discuss and to find a solution for the African continent. Also to integrate all uh, framework we have in the, in, in the continent. We have several frameworks from, uh, from uh, African Union. We have framework from Smart Africa. We have framework from uh, ECA. We have to harmonize all. Because harmonization is very important. We are not going to work single. Order. We have to work together to harmonize everything. And why we talk, we talk about the single, uh, single digital market? We are working with uh, the AUC to put in place this framework for the single digital market. Thank you. Let me now rush to the next presentation. Amal, I'm going to give you. What is Amal? Okay, let me call uh, Amel. Amel is not here. Let me give the floor to to, da to da Daniel uh, from AAC. Hmm? Just you are, I want you to highlight. Huh? the key activity of East African uh, community yeah, during this post-COVID mm -hmm. in terms of capacity building, capacity building and as well as uh, collaboration between the member states. Uh, I give you five, five, four minutes. Yes. Yeah, good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Murenzi. I'm the principal information technology officer for the East African community. Yeah. Thank you. I think you, you have known that I came from far in East Africa. So I had to put my back down a bit. Uh, thank you, Mukhtar. And uh, for the little time you have given me, maybe as people setting up in the interest of time, uh, colleagues who don't know the East African community, I met even people were asking me, yeah. So for the East African communities, harmonization towards the uh, digital integration, we have established a center of excellence for ICT in mobile technology and embedded systems to support the capacity building. From the presentation of the Nyambula, you saw that there is a need for the capacity building and how to harmonize. So we have already established our regional center of excellences for the e-health, in one of our partner states for the ICT uh, in mobile technology so that we can provide the capacity building. Uh, during the post-COVID and during the COVID time, I think you saw that uh, it's only East African community that we never crossed our borders for the movement of the cargo, goods and services. And this was due to the harmonization the East African community member states we have come up with in our digital strategy. So we do have our digital strategy that is cross-cutting within uh, all sectors, health sector, financial sector, uh, customs and trade. And through this, this is the only way we managed to con con uh, control the pandemic using the technology. You saw that it, we are the only first, I think, if it not the whole world, to come up with a digital certificate for the COVID that would allow you to move within the region without double testing. So that was due to the, the issues of the capacity building. So lastly, because of the limited time that we are given, uh, we have uh, domesticated our policy and the strategy from the continental level to the regional level. And now we are ensuring that East African community member states are in line with the implementation of the uh, continental strategy and the regional strategy. And in this, uh, we have now established different sector committees that are supporting our implementation. Thank you. Maybe given time, I would add on. 
Thank you very much. Let me go quickly to Amel because we have. A, there is one initiative for the startup, uh, the woman startup. Hmm? Just highlight uh, how we can empower this uh, woman startup in the continent through this uh, initiative. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Fantastic. Uh, well, uh, we're going to use a few slides to share with you actually the, an overview of uh, the uh, Tech African Women as an initiative to bring ideas to action. And, uh, and thank you, Maktar, by the way, for bringing up the topic of startups uh, as uh, one of the uh, components of this conversation, because uh, startups are actually the, the vehicle to translate, uh, to convert technology into economic uh, value and social benefits. They're also uh, problem solvers. They, uh, they uh, uh, advance the society through th solving problems that no classical sectors are, are addressing today. And they are also a tool for um, recovery from uh, COVID since they enable uh, enterprise and SMEs in terms of uh, tools and solutions for, uh, to, uh, to activate their digital transformation. But uh, before we dive into, into Tao, um, uh, I'd like to bring things into perspective. Maybe I'll just stand here. Uh, bringing things into perspective uh, in terms of uh, where we stand today as a continent, because uh, we uh, we tend to uh, be uh, to celebrate actually that we are uh, we have uh, um, over five billion of a VC investment that were attracted to the continent in the last year, uh, but uh, we need to pr bring things uh, to perspective when we think of that uh, according to the World Economic Forum, 600 billion of VC investment have been invested last year in startups. So uh, you, doing the math is very easy. We, easy. we are less than 1% of global VC investment. But the question is, why is that happening? Like, why is this? So uh, there is no random occurrence when it comes to investing or when it comes to uh, 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 development of startup ecosystems. We, we might take, for example, the Indian um, uh, development in that sense. So there is um, an, an, an intention, a strategy, a statement to move, to multiply the startup ecosystem by 10 um, from now to 2030. And this is the type of decisions that we need to take as a continent. Um, multiplying uh, it by 10 means that it's going to reach, at least for the consumer market, over 800 billion of size of uh, the startup market by 2030, which, uh, which means, so, so it doesn't, again, it doesn't happen randomly. It's not a random occurrence. It's an intention. And this means over 100 million of VC invest of investment in startups per day. So if we look at what's going on in the continent, maybe we are, we, we are, there is a lot we need to catch up with. So Tech African Women was actually a response. Uh, I come actually from the field of an entrepreneur, even though I act also uh, as uh, president of the Startup Association, so working also with policymakers, with the government to make things move in terms of um, uh, enabling the, the startup uh, ecosystem, the startup environment. However, we started by looking at the reality of Africa here, and we have seen that um, uh, only 16% of uh, VC investment went to uh, startups that are led and co-founded by women. So if we, you look at startups that are women only led, so like uh, the sea level is all uh, women, it's, uh, it's less than 2% of investment. So, and this is something we, we wanted to combine, so next please. So uh, in order to make things work on that front, um, we thought we, we need to bring in um, skills, but not only. We want to translate these skills into real startups. We want to support these women-led startups turn their ideas into reality. And this only happens if they have access to investment at the very early stage. So enough funds, enough money to develop their own products, enough skilled people, experts, developers to develop these ideas, but they need to to be hands-on, they, they need um, hands-on support for them to be uh, able to translate these ideas into reality. So this combination of action was actually a pan-African program that we have imagined so that, so that is uh, now part of the ECA uh, strategy um, in order to enforce, reinforce the capacities of young entrepreneurs and accelerate the transformation of their project ideas into investment-ready projects. So, and while doing that, we want also to bridge one of the challenges of the African continent, which is what we have called earlier probably um, a diverse continent. It brings with it an economic reality that is rather called fragmented continent. So uh, in order to, to bridge this fragmentation, we are building a community of connected startups uh, on, the, uh, on the whole African continent. Next, please. 
So um, this, um, uh, no, no, uh, the one before, please. So it's uh, just about to telling you that what, what our intention is with this Tech African Women. This Tao uh, wants to become actually a whole African movement. So we want to reach by 2025 a um, 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 platform that connects all African countries and allows women-led startups, still diverse startups, but still women-led, uh, to, uh, to move from zero to uh, one, which means um, a product that, is, uh, uh, that has a validated smart product market fit and that is ready to raise funds. And with that, we will create a community of partners, of VCs, of investors, uh, of, um, uh, a whole com of access to market around our startups. Next, next. Um, so this is actually an, uh, a project that connects the Connected African Women uh, initiative that exists already, uh, that is already uh, implemented by ECA, moving it to the next level. Uh, so not stopping at the level of skills and turning these ideas into reality. Next. So what we want to do is empowering female, uh, women founders, validating business models, because startups are there actually to solve problems. They, are, they love solving problems. And we are blessed on this country, uh, continent to have enough interesting problems to solve. And this is not just sarcasm, it's actually a reality because the bigger the problem is, the more interesting uh, things get for the entrepreneurs because they have a big enough problem to solve. This means actually a, ma a big enough market to address. And uh, they, uh, so they will be solving our problems and still through this initiative, Connecting African Women. Next. So, uh, uh, next, next. This was uh, Tech African Women 1.0. Uh, and now we are preparing the Tech African Women 2.0 starting uh, early 2023. Um, so the Tech African Women 1.0 was actually a combination of uh, boot camps. So it's, it's a hybrid thing. It's online boot camps, uh, local boot camps in the countries, and then an incubation or vent what we call venture uh, building program uh, that is done remotely to support startups actually go uh, from the idea stage and move from just the theoretical skills to something that's working, that's uh, validated on, on the market. Next. Okay, so we are also supporting uh, these women with grants, uh, besides availing access to developers, uh, to marketeers, to financial experts, etc. cetera. We, we give them grants so that they can have enough uh, funds to sustain their existence until the next uh, step. And this, this is something we want to scale up in the next level. So it's about MVP development, uh, cultural exchange workshops, webinars, uh, experts uh, exchange, etc. Next. Next. Okay, so key numbers we have uh, so far uh, with this uh, pilot phase, which was uh, uh, this year, a number of applicants of over 300, a uh, number of uh, participants uh, that's uh, uh, 74 led to eight uh, supported startups. And now uh, we're moving to the next uh, level. Oh, by the way, the winning teams um, that we have been supported are startups that are solving problems in agriculture, uh, supporting breeders uh, of cows. These are startups supporting actually uh, with, uh, supporting women. Uh, these are startups uh, solving uh, water problems, water scarcity problems. Uh, also problems, uh, challenges in AI, in uh, sexual and reproductive, reproductive health, etc., etc. So this is um, an, an example of what type of uh, problems we're trying to solve through this. Uh, and now uh, we're closing. This is the ecosystem we're building around our startups. So it's not only about the startups, it's all about activating all the startup support organizations around them and connecting them in one single platform that happens, uh, that happens to be on the whole continent. Uh, coming clo to, uh, to closing on that, so the, you see a lot of uh, energy, uh, amazing energy happening in these boot camps, in, this, uh, uh, in, these, uh, in these programs. Uh, next. Now we're talking about, yes. Uh, tech, uh, we are talking about uh, Tech African Women 2.0, which is the second edition, meaning happening this year. Uh, every year we'll be growing, uh, growing uh, exponentially like, uh, like it, it should be uh, for, uh, for startups. So uh, now uh, we have started with four countries this year. We've started with uh, uh, Senegal, Ethiopia, Tanzania and uh, Tunisia. Now we're expanding to 16 countries, uh, 12 new countries coming on top. So every year new countries will come on top of the countries of uh, last year. Uh, four physical regional boot camps gathering 80 startups, uh, four incubation programs going on simultaneously uh, in these, uh, in these uh, regional uh, spaces, and also final uh, prizes and incubation for the winning teams so that they ca can move from uh, to, to the next level. Uh, next year is going to be uh, more countries coming on top of these uh, countries and the acceleration 
of these startups that have been supported from idea to a minimum viable product. So we're not leaving them alone. We're not leaving them in the nature. We are going to support them to move to the next level, to be even more investment ready. And this is our way to practically solve the challenge of uh, VCs and investors who tell us, uh, oh, actually, uh, yes, we'd love to invest in women, but we couldn't find them. They're now nowhere. So this is how we're going to tell them, uh, come and join us. You will find them. Um, Tech African Women is uh, looking for partners. So uh, uh, please uh, connect with us, uh, talk to us if you are interested to come on board. Uh, we are going to be uh, in 2025, uh, the biggest platform connecting uh, startups led by women. Um, so come on board. Thank you, Amal. You can discuss with us to see how we are going to involve your country in this uh, initiative. As the objective is by 2025, we have all African countries on this platform. This uh, project is focused on women, yeah, not on men. Thank you. Let me go to AUC. There are several initiatives at the AUC level, uh, like this uh, digital transformation strategy, data governance framework, uh, E education uh, framework we are working on the digital single market as well as on artificial intelligence could it could you tell us how this initiative can improve the digital uh, transformation in the continent and also bridge the digital gap in the continent quickly for five minutes. thank you uh, distinguished uh, participants all protocol observed so thank you for the opportunity to be part of this uh, panel to respond to the question, I would say that uh, I, would, I would start by highlighting the strong partnership between the African Union and uh, the United Nations. And uh, uh, because like we have uh, the SDGs and the Agenda 2063, they are fully aligned. And uh, within the AU, we even ma uh, conducted the mapping and we report both at the same time on the progress in the implementation of the Agenda 2063 and uh, uh, SDGs. And you can see that on the Audanipad uh, website, which is the implementing uh, agency of the African Union. As we know, like both in Agenda 2063 and Agenda 2030, uh, uh, ICT is not uh, uh, explicitly highlighted as a goal, but it is cross-cutting. And from our side, in the first 10 uh, years implementation plan, it was reflected as uh, contributing to the improving high standard living of people and also to, to the GDP. But now that we are preparing the second uh, 10 years implementation plan, we really aim to reflect it in all uh, different like goals and uh, aspirations as a driver and also as an enabler for change and progress. Uh, my colleagues this morning, both uh, Mr. Moses Bayingana and uh, Nyambora, they highlighted all the activities that are ongoing within the African Union. I would say that we are fully aligned uh, with what the priorities that has been presented by the UN Secretary General Special Envoy and also by UNICA. And we can work together for the benefit of our countries and uh, people. We, we have started the implementation of the, the, the digital transformation strategy. We developed this year an implementation plan and also monitoring and evaluation system with a dashboard that we aim to to put in place in the next year where we, to enable um, uh, countries to, to monitor their own progress at national level and also as a continental organization, it will help us to have a picture on what is, has been across the continent. So this strategy is, uh, as Nyambora mentioned, is in line with the WCS Action Line 1 on promoting ICT for development. But inside the strategy, we, we reflect the whole action lines like for the four pillars, we have the enabling environment, which speaks to action line six. We have digital infrastructure, speaks to action line two. We have digital skills, action line four. And also in the cross-cutting uh, topics that has been identified by the digital transformation strategy, we have the reflected action line and one and three. On the key sectors, we have identified key sectors and for us, like the uh, action line on seven as on application, we moved towards developing uh, sectorial digital strategies. And I think with work is in progress. And it was mentioned this morning that there is already digital transformation strategy for education that was validated by, uh, endorsed by the Specialized Technical Committee on Science, Technology and Education. 
and there is an e-commerce strategy that was validated also by member state and it will be examined next year and uh, we have developed the digital uh, id interoperability framework which is key for development of the uh, digital single market in africa and also for enabling african citizens to access to to e-services we started also the work on implementation of the au data policy framework to enable uh, our countries to develop their data systems their data capabilities and also to facilitate cross-border data flows in africa which is a precondition for development of digital economy in africa in summary i would say that uh, for us we do understand that the main challenge for the digitalization in africa is to secure funding and we are working towards integrating digital in all our uh, partnerships with other regions and also we are uh, in the process of developing a financial mechanism and also to establish a digital fund uh, like to support countries and to also we do understand that we really need to implement the, the principles of the uh, constitutive act of the african union and also the digital transformation strategy by moving towards uh, establishing collaboration and also solidarity because uh, african countries they are progressing at different levels and we need to bring them together to avoid the digital divide we value the cooperation with un and we have already this year we aligned the the regional uh, initi uh, priorities for africa in wtdc with uh, dts and also we work on close collaboration with unica and we call to we really uh, aim to, to strengthen this cooperation to build the capacities of our countries to enable them to be part of this global discussion and also to, on shaping this uh, global digital uh, uh, space and we i i would like to say that uh, it is an opportunity for all of us to work together and to bring our countries together and to enable them to be uh, active participation in the upcoming world summit on digital future thank you Thank, thank you very much. We are running out of time because uh, I level leader track uh, started and we are the we are part on that. I'm going to give the floor quickly to to Eric uh, to talk about the artificial intelligence center in Congo. But you can continue the discussion with the team. The team uh, of the digital center are there. You have uh, Ilda is there. You have uh, Godfrey. All people are there and uh, Ibrahim. Hmm? You have Gajon. You can continue to discuss with them. Um, and to discuss uh, on the several uh, program we have discussed we have also gibson and for the task force uh, Ponsele is there he can uh, discuss with you how to expand the task force to the wishes and also to the global digital compact as well as the summit of the future I, i'm going to give you a quick user flow uh, to conclude uh, eric or uh, we have a we have established a digital uh, center uh, an art, uh, research center on artificial intelligence in congo how this center can help to to make progress in the digital era in the continent to in capacity building of course and skill development merci je vais parler en, en français euh, comme vous l'avez dit le centre africain de recherche en intelligence artificielle a été euh, érigé au congo brazzaville grâce au concours de la commission économique des nations unies euh, pour l'afrique le centre euh, est déjà opérationnel et avec à la clé quatre programmes de formation donc nous avons le premier programme de formation que nous appelions ici le euh, Caria Académique, qui va former les jeunes Africains en, en, en système LMD, licence master doctorat. Mais dans, dès l'année prochaine, nous allons commencer le premier programme déjà de ce programme académique pour former des ingénieurs africains en, en, en master de sciences, de, en master en intelligence artificielle et sciences de données. Mais nous avons également compris qu'au niveau de l'Afrique, il y a un problème de pénurie où ceux qui ont déjà des compétences comme des informaticiens ont besoin d'avoir des compétences supplémentaires. Et nous avons ajouté un deuxième programme, ce que nous appelons ici le, le Career Skills. Ça, c'est un programme de renforcement des capacités de tous les jeunes Africains qui veulent se former dans les nouveaux métiers d'avenir, donc notamment l'intelligence artificielle et toutes les technologies euh, euh, émergentes. Et enfin, nous avons un troisième programme que nous appelons ici le Career Power. Ça, c'est un programme qui est uniquement euh, réservé aux jeunes aux jeunes africains qui ont déjà terminé les études, donc les jeunes diplômés sans emploi, mais pour leur donner une chance de rebondir sur le marché du travail, on leur forme ici dans les nouveaux métiers d'avenir, notamment l'intelligence artificielle, les sciences des données, et la cybersécurité et autres. Et enfin, nous avons également le programme 
euh, qu'on appelle le Career for Youth. Donc ça, c'est un programme qui est uniquement réservé à l'initiation à la robotique et, au, et à l'intelligence artificielle aux élèves du cycle primaire, secondaire euh, de, de tous les pays africains, pour ceux qui veulent. Et enfin, je voulais dire ici que pour combler le, le déficit en compétences, nous sommes rentrés en partenariat avec l'Alliance Smart Africa. Dans le mois passé, nous avons formé euh, beaucoup de jeunes Congolais. Donc, on a fait une formation des formateurs en intelligence artificielle. Et nous avons en ce moment une formation qui est en cours, par exemple, sur la, sur la cybersécurité. Donc là aussi, c'est une formation des formateurs en cybersécurité. Et très bientôt, nous allons euh, former plus de 300 jeunes, d'abord au, euh, au niveau national, justement en intelligence artificielle et sur tous les métiers d'avenir. Donc ici, c'est une opportunité de dire que tous les, tous les Africains peuvent accéder à ce centre-là. Donc, si vous voulez avoir plus d'informations, comment accéder à ce centre, comment avoir euh, l'information sur les programmes, des cours, les programmes que nous avons mis en place pour développer euh, le centre africain, n'hésitez pas à vous rapprocher de moi. Merci. Donc, merci beaucoup à, à tout le monde. C'était vraiment une, une session très riche. On a beaucoup appris et puis on a beaucoup échangé sur le, quoi faire pour développer les technologies au bénéfice de, de l'Afrique et de l'humanité parce qu'on a parlé du 2023, also, on a parlé de, du digital compact qui concerne tout le monde. Donc, je remercie tous les participants, le, le staff de UNICA et aussi la, la task force et aussi les, les coordonnatrices, les coordonnateurs de ce workshop. I'm going to give the floor as focal point, uh, to Hilda focal point uh, for this uh, session to say some words and to close this uh, session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Makta. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this session. It was a, a real pleasure having you all here. And um, let me say thanks to our panelists. Please, a round of applause to them. So thank you very much. It was a pleasure to hear all these initiatives that are taking place in the continent. And um, we are all looking forward. For the interest of time, I think this is just the beginning of discussion. So let's just keep on for the next uh, three, four, four days, five days that will be here. Please let's interact and let's see how we can connect uh, the unconnected in Africa and make sure that we have a universal and meaningful connectivity in the continent. With that, um, thank you very much. And as you're going out, please make sure you, you register to the attendance. My colleague Adiam will be there. So please make sure you register. That will help us to make sure that we send um, the presentation and everything to you. So once more, thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very much to our panelists. <laughs>